Hello, so Richard, and uh, I'm here to talk about a specific idea that I've had for like a, a while now, and that has to do with, um, I talked about this with uh, how Anderson Silva could be beaten and everything with the fight, the UFC fight with uh, Weldman or whatever his name is, Wademan or whatever, and I kind of, I came up with the idea that he, that, that, um, that there's, you know, there's mental energy, and and mental energy, the keyword energy, it it, it, it influences uh, the small quantum levels of space and time. It, it influences the quantum foam of space and time. And um, everything in space and time, all the objects, they never really connect. They connect only in a, geo, geo, uh, in a, in a geometrically kind of uh, structured way in a space-time kind of geometrically structured ener energy way. But everything in space and time, even as though they collide, they don't really collide. What happens is that the information from one object to another is sent. That information is a space and time itself. W one way to explain it is that when a collision is coming toward, when you're fighting somebody, and a collision in the fist is coming toward the face. People may say that the, fa the fist hit the face and it made a uh, knuckle imprint in the cheek. But what happens is that the, the face and the fist never really, ever really truly collide in, in, a, in a real scientific sense. In the quantum level, the small level, what they do is that they, they send information from one to another, the fist is a mass connected to an organism, a living organism, with, which is a human being, a living being. That, that living being has energy that's, that bends space and time with a mental energy and is able to, to send um, energy from the brain to the rest of the body to tighten up and to lift and to run and to uh, all these other things. All that energy uh, uh, then influences the fist. The fist then in turn because it becomes tighter, it bends the quantum space and time. It bends space and time in the quantum level, the quantum foam that bends it. When it bends it, those small, uh, those small warps of space and time carry information. When the fist flies toward the face, that, in, that warping, the information is traveled by the warping. When the warping gets close, it makes the collision toward the face, the head, the fist sends the information from the warping, through the warping, it never makes a real collision. It makes a collision in a, in a more of a quantum geometric space-time sense, but never in a real collision collision. It, it sends information through the warping of space and time around the knuckles, and it tells the face to become, it tells the face to become um, manipulated. It tells the face to form the collision. The information is sent to the face from the fist, a small space between the face and fist. There's information passing. That space warping sends information to the cheek, telling the face to become, to become, to become indented or to become. Um, to become impressionized with the knuckle, it become it 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 becomes influenced by the knuckle. And like I was saying, the space between the fist and the cheek, the space warping is what transfers the information to the cheek, telling the cheek to create the formation of the collision. Because the face, now, now this is the trick. The reason why the formation of the face, the, 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 the collision of the formation of the, of, the, of, the, of the punch is created on the face of the opponent is because the opponent's mental energy that he sends out with, throughout his body and skin and muscle is not strong. He's not... He's not in the mental state to, to withstand the information. The skin then reads that information from the space-time warping and then confides 
and bends and melds to the collision. It creates the collision. The fist towels the face through a space between them. It sends information in a space between them to create the imprint of the collision of the fist on the face. And that information tells the skin to let loose a certain amount of blood and bruising and allow a certain amount of bruising to occur. That's what I'm trying to get at. Is that the information and the space-time warping of the fist is sent through and may it may look like it's making a collision, but there is no real collision. It's mostly like like an air pocket between the fist and the face. That air pocket is a warping space of the mass itself in the quantum foam level. That information is sent to the face. The face reads it, and it depends on what state the face is in, because each face is a different state of of a uh, a proper. Um, recognizing being being more stronger be uh, depending on how the person is thinking or feeling or how reacting sometimes the face will not comply to the fist imprint and that's just my idea for now of how geometrically space and time and things do not really collide but that there's always a quantum level of space in between them that causes the information there's information of being passed back and forth from the fist to the face and there's other ways to explain it and other levels to explain it of other objects colliding. The fist tells the face how bad to be bruised. The fist tells the face how bad the imprint is going to be to the face without ever touching it. It has a space between the face and fist. The information is passed like a, like a, like radio transmissions and all that stuff. It tells another, a rope, uh, um, a device from Houston tells a device in New York to turn on. That's what's happening in, in, in things in our reality. That's what's happening when fighting happens. And it just depends on how the opponent, his mental state, reacts to the fist information. If he wants to comply to it or to push it away. It all depends. That's my idea for how space and time works and I want to talk about Anderson Silva and the fight and all that and how fighting is but that fighters there are no real fighters no will no real winners but I'll explain that later thank you for listening well it's Richard and uh, I'm here to talk about um, the fact that there are no real fighters no real winners in fighting now what I mean by that is that let me just put a little example Anderson Silva and uh, Mike Tyson, and uh, Manny Pacquiao, and uh, Mayweather. All these fighters are supposedly great fighters. But one thing you, you forget from the other video that I spoke about, about talking about how to be Anderson Silva, is that the reason why these fighters win is because they're, the people allow them to win. It sounds kind of uh, insane to kind of say, but the thing is though is that, you know, you with your mind you create this energy that bends space and time around you the energy in your mind bends it and that energy just like i spoke about the fist sends information to 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 be transferred to another to another body or another object to be manipulated like a ball flicking a ball flicking a flicking a, a quarter in the air those types of things are created because you're sending information to allow that to occur. There is no real contact in in the quantum world. There is only contact. There's only trend, uh, exchange of, of information. The thing is, though, that the people that are involved in these fights are not emotionally involved or not emotionally threatened, or they're at a level because the emotion also bends space and time. Any form of energy that you create with your mind, which is emotional. Or, or any form of thought creates energy and it in that in turn it manipulates the quantum foam of space-time itself the geometry of space-time itself which manipulates things around you and sends information to be changed and these people do not see these fighters as ultimate threats like life-threatening threats 
you know, um, they're not emotionally involved. It's, it, it's a subconscious, small, quanta level of, of, of negligence on their part. It's like, it's like seeing a child, a grown adult, seeing a child and a child trying to come at them and trying to fight them. In a way, they see these people as small. And when they get involved in fights, they actually allow the people to win the fight. It's just a subconscious manifestation. It's a subconscious um, occurrence that the fists, because remember, the fist sends information, it transfers the information through the geometry of space and time between the two bodies exchanging blows. When one fist sends information to the other face, it's sending information and the, and the person has to subconsciously within milliseconds, billions of a second, acknowledge whether he or she wants to become bruised or become battered. The person is subconsciously allowing a win or a loss to occur, but it's within billions of a trillions of a Google of a second that we make these decisions in the quantum state of our reality. Because, it, because remember, bod, two bodies in space and time in the quantum level in, and in the quantum foam, they never really touch. The only thing, the, the information is sent through the bending of space and time through the mass. The more energy, the more um, energy that you send through your fist uh, being tightened, bends space and time. It spins, it, it, it manipulates, it, it, it sends information through the quarks and through, through the atoms of, of, the, of space. And through the quantum foam, which is the smallest, even smaller than, than quarks, is a, is a quantum foam. There's um, bending and bending and shifting of space and time. Like our bodies bend and shift through space and time, even when there's not even high speeds. Like we're doing it every day, just moving our arms up and down, but it's in small levels, small, small levels. But we're actually time traveling, time traveling um, in small distances. Our arms travel up and down because they're traveling through space and in time. They're time traveling. The arm is time traveling as you sway it up and down. But it's doing it in the small quantum levels. In order to travel far distances, you have to, you have to manipulate larger amounts of space-time through um, binding of, of energy in, in just a lot of, you know, uh, exceeding the uh, exceeding light speed and and all these other things, and uh, and 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 making like a a, a portal. I mean, not a portal, but a, a black hole. You know, by by manipulating space time itself, and creating a black hole to travel through space. But through the small levels, we're we're time traveling. That's how our arms and our arms and legs travel through space and time because our arms and legs are time traveling as they sway up and down. But like I said, back to the point, there are no real fighters because the person has to acknowledge or let the person win through the transfer of quantum information through billions of a Google of a second, through two bodies of the fist flying right at you. We don't recognize it, but when one billionth of a second, when the, when the opponent lifts their arm up or when they flex that's sending information to us letting us know whether we want that person to win or lose most of the time we let them win subconsciously unknowingly letting them win that's how winners are made in eras and the era that you live in is made through the era we do not no one is a real winner and no one is a real loser we're both Winners and losers were both equal in this same game, in the same game of fighting. You know, that's an amazing feat. And two bodies don't, don't really, the only thing that exchanges in, in our universe is information, not real mass. You know, I information is mass, but, it's in, but it's, it's in a different way of transferring. And right when the fist comes right in, we, we make the decision right when he lifts his arms up. Right when he lifts his arms up. From like what two feet away, we're gonna let him win. Subconsciously, Google for a second. We're gonna let him win. This fist is gonna come hit us. And other points and other positions of emotional states, and through the the rounds and things like that, we allow certain punches to enter and to not 
<laughs> you know, it's, it's a real complex thing, but we're allowing that. So really, the, really, Manny Pacquiao is not a real winner. Uh, Anderson Silva is not a winner. They're only winners because we allow them to win within the era that we exist in. And only because we are um, ill-equipped to, to really take them seriously emotionally. We just don't recognize it in ourselves. But if you were to go back in time and fight some <sighs> other boxer in the past, you would be able to beat him up because your mind is more advanced now. You're more aggressive now in the future. If you go back in the 1930s and fight someone, you'll beat them up because you're more aggressive. You understand martial arts. You understand how to punch. You understand the emotions. Your emotions are much more um, in tune more. You understand things more. That's why I'm trying to say, when, when I was talking about Anderson Silva, how to beat Anderson Silva, that's what I'm trying to say in one of the videos. So I'll explain this more later on another video, but really, no one really wins. There is no real punches being, and there are no winners, there are no losers. It's only people letting each other win subconsciously in quantum seconds, letting them win. It's all a big game, and it's all one big circle. This is Richard Cespedes. Thank you for watching.